Hi, this is Paul from Tesla Owners US and today we are visiting Mike. And you probably have seen Mike in my previous movies before because he was the first one renting out from my company Spark Rental. And then he got his own Model 3 and he did additional stuff on his Model 3, drove a whole bunch of miles and we're going to hear this story. And also what special thing he did on the Model 3, what many people ask me about, but what nobody expected. So stay with us and subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up. Okay, now we're getting close. The destination is on your right. Arrived. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm gonna park backwards then. On this driveway. Okay, gonna let's check. This is Mike's home. And knock. So hey, there we go. Hey, how are you? Hey, good to good, see you. Good, good. And there. <laughs> Hi, Ralph. Hey, how are you? Good. Okay, we are at your home finally. Yes, finally. And we want to see what you have all done. Hey, open the garage door. Hey, let's go open the garage door and see what's in there. And let's swing around. So this is usually where we have the Model 3 here. We have the Mustang here right now. Model oh, the and shop. then we have a Mustang here. <laughs> the three in the shop. <laughs> so we can sit there and do the interview with it. But yeah. this is where we normally park it. So we have our Tesla wall charger right there. Yes. Which is 56 amps. And then you, can you plug me in? I sure can. All right. <laughs> I get the full 56 amps. I only get 48 amps on my Model 3. <laughs> But it's on a 70 amp circuit. Yeah, open the ga the port. Oops. Oops, there you go. Uh, wait a sec, I need to. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, 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 you know what happened? I know it. There we go. I think I have to reopen the charge port. Now it's open. There we go, it's yes. locked out. Okay, it was locked out. Your car's okay. like, I only want solar power. I don't want none of this good power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what it is. So this is our other electric car, we have electric spark. Okay. Which we had to go to California to get this because oh. none of the Chevy dealers would help us out, so. Oh yeah, they... It's they, dirty. Yeah, but the they, <laughs> they guys didn't want to sell it here, right? No, exactly. So I, felt, I even offered to pay them to help me and you know get the deal done, but I just started calling around some places in California, made the deal, had it shipped over there, I mean over here, and there we go. Yeah. I, I think range. it was a good car for as a small as, as a small car. This, oh, for a small car, it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a great car. It's it's a compliance car, right? It is. Oh yeah, so they don't for, make them anymore. But it's got liquid cooled batteries. It's got really nice range on 100 miles. And yeah. It's consistent. It's not like the Leaf that drops every month. You get fewer and fewer miles. Yeah, but this because has, of the liquid cooling. Yep. Yes. Yeah. This has a lot of torque. Yeah. I can tell you, she zips all over the place with this. So thing. here comes the first charger for that one. Bosch 40 amp charger. 40 amp charger, good. Yep. Okay. So when you bought the Spark, they give you a $500 credit for any Bosch chargers. So that was kind of like a free charger. Yeah. So so now, so why not? I take it. Yeah, I take <laughs> it. Right. Take it. You take it. But we got the And then we're here. Oh, there's already Halloween. <laughs> it's, always <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> it's always Halloween. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> yeah, and even the washing machine Orange side, yeah. Halloween yeah. style. <laughs> <laughs> this is our other charger that yeah. we got when we got the Leaf Clipper Very Creek, nice also one. 40 amps. Yeah, Clipper. I, you know, the first Tesla charger was the Clipper Creek. Was it? It was originally. They, I still have, actually, I have two of them for the Roadster. Oh yeah, it okay. was a CS one hundred cap uh, Clipper Creek, but a special, on, uh, but plug with, for it? yeah, just a special plug for it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. so this is, you know, I so I can plug my car in the garage there. And let let's let's look a little bit for over on that. Oh, oh 67, right. Mustang, 67 Mustang. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. is actually your hobby, right? It is. I built this. I've been building muscle cars for twenty some odd years. And uh, once we got the Leaf, I'm like, oh, these electric cars are cool. So then we got the Spark, and then we waited for the Model Three. 
which they said, oh, no such thing as a Model 3. And then all of a sudden Elon says, we're having a Model 3 release. And we're like, see, I told you. So, <laughs> as soon as that was open, we were in line and we got our reservation. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, this is uh, a GT40X freight oh, wow. motor with the GT40X aluminum heads, fully polished. Fully polished, chrome, yeah, about all everywhere. Horsepower, 400 tor pounds of torque. It's all what you can get out of a fuel engine. Yep, it's about the best you can get on a nice, clean uh, uh, gas engine. That's a carbonator on that one. There's no injection. Carburetor is all right? Carburation, yep, yeah, no fuel injection. Yeah. Nothing electronic about it. Well, it's electronic ignition, but yeah, that's about it. But yeah, I'll custom made all this stuff in the engine compartment and all that kind of stuff. Had this on a rotisserie, stripped it all down, rebuilt it all, put it all back together. Wow. So it's uh, de definitely a nice car. I built this to go cruising, but it came out so nice I really didn't want to get it all dirty. So. No, because it's, if you keep it like that, it's more worse. Yep. I tell yeah, you. plus the gas. So let's look in the inside of so the it's, driver's it's all seat. Power windows, power hood, power door locks, power everything on it. All electronic gauges. You can see these are all LED gauges. They light up like that, if you can see that. Ah, uh, yeah. There you go. Aftermarket air conditioning, power steering. At that time it didn't have air conditioning or? Uh, uh, that was the first year to have factory air conditioning and that's the factory AC vent so it's using. Very when nice. I put the little, oops, Amber Alert. Okay, great. We're back? Yeah, now we're <laughs> going in the back. Okay, so there you go. Oh. And these are radial tires, right? And Chrome to steel. Yep. Uh, we had old school radial TAs, the BFG radial yep. TAs, classic tray, classic look. Rocket 15 inch wheels. This is the trunk on the inside, so. Yeah. You know, your trunk for your Model 3 is much bigger. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so that's the battery, and the battery charges up right here on the back, so. Was it always the battery? Uh, no, it was in the front. I put it, it was in the, the You put it in the back, and you have to, oh, you have to put all the wires through the yeah, car. Yeah, you run a big one out, a zero watt cable all the way up there to start it. Yeah. But it's better in the back because there's less clutter in the engine compartment. But for plugging it in with your battery tender, so it's not on drive it a lot, I put the battery tender back here where the gas fluid usually goes. So that's why it looks like it's plugged in. <laughs> yeah, and this is the backup of. camera. Yep. Yeah. And then right here is where the gas filler is. There's a gas tank underneath all that. You know, gas tanks and gas cars. Yeah. And you know, it is better because it makes that engine more clear yep, without makes, having that yep. stupid battery and, uh, and the fuses in there, yeah. right? Yep. I have all that stuff yeah. hidden. You don't see it. Yep. Everything's LED. LED headlights. LED tail lights. Ah, good. Good. Stuff, yep. good. We won a cash prize at a car show. For this. Yep. Went to a lot of. A lot of car oh. shows. Yeah. Well, yeah, this thing has been totally stripped down and totally made new. And look, I'm charging already. Yep. <laughs> that green power is going right into Rolls Model S. <laughs> yes. There it goes. Okay, good. Hey. So this is the regular garage where it usually is, and of course, we, the shop is where I put the Model 3 since we're doing it. So let's day. go in the shop. This is the shop where I spend a lot of time playing around, doing stuff. And here we go, we're coming to the Model 3. And this is the future right here. Yes. Model 3, 300 miles of range, which is amazing. Yeah, he drove around a lot, right? So yep. you had to already, already drove all the way out to Virginia and back, which was a 6,000 mile round trip. Yeah. We went to Pasadena, which was, I don't know, a few hundred miles each way. Yeah. Went to uh, Bisbee. Or Prescott, we're going to so now I'm month. seeing some bicycles there now. Tell me what did you do in the back? And that's the surprise what I have right announced. There you go. So we just got this set up together. Uh, yeah. That's the Eco Hitch, which they make uh, made by Torque, Torque, uh, uh, Torque Flight or something. Torque like Lift, yeah. Torque Lift. Torque Lift, yes. Torque Lift. Because I have that on my Model S, or Martina's Model S has a Torque Lift. Okay. What I installed for myself as well. Yeah, so when you install this, you take the whole rear bumper off and everything, and it just bolts right on yeah. nice and easy. So now, and then... Two-inch hitch, and then this yeah. is a, this is a Thule Easy Fold bike rack. Yeah. So it secures bikes. These are pretty big, heavy bikes. I think that's, is that the Swedish Thule? Yeah, they're they're Swedish, Swedish, aren't they? Swedish, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then... You guys said it's pronounced Thule. That, yeah, that clamp, clamps in, right? Instead of using tire clamps, because we have fenders on it, we had yeah. to find a bike rack that uses regular clamps. Yeah. And this uses clamps and it secures them nice That's and tight. That looks very stable. Yep, it is really already drove around. It's nice you can use the backup camera to always keep an eye on it. Yeah. It also folds down. 
so that you have easier access yep, to the trunk, right? To the trunk and everything, yep. Yeah. And it has a ramp that uh, you can roll the bikes up. It's actually made for electric e-bikes because it's got a higher weight capacity of 130 pounds. So these bikes uh, weigh about 50 pounds each, so it works for us because we needed something that could take that weight. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. <clears throat> so you want to look at the trunk? Oh yeah, I'll show you some cool stuff I did to it. <clears throat> Turn yeah. that back light off. Boo Kitty. Yep, yeah, that's Boo Kitty. <laughs> Who's Boo Kitty? He's in the passenger seat, too. He's in the passenger seat. So I added the abstract ocean lights, which you can see. Uh, yeah, on the camera, they are really showing now bluish. That looks it's just really these cool. two little lights right here, you just snap them in and replace them. Very easy. It's very easy to replace them, yeah? But it makes it really significantly brighter. Yeah, it's, like it's so dark in there. On the camera, it comes really bright. Yeah. And then do you have an extra blanket yep, on it? This right? is a Mambi, it's a waterproof pet blanket, so you can put stuff in there, spill things or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can put it over the lip for hauling stuff home from like home people or whatever. And then you told me that you have some special things for the... Yep, so uh, these I made. You turn the light back on. Yep. Yep. Okay. These I made for if you ever have to go someplace besides home. They're little yeah. pucks for lifting your car up. So these press right up into is that the, the is it it's an ice hockey puck it's a hockey puck yeah a hockey puck yeah you yeah, just drill it out and put a one inch piece of hose in there yeah and it fits right up in there friction fits up stays there yeah then discount tire comes in they jack the car up they change the tires do whatever fix your flat put it back down then you just go collect all your pucks and they don't ruin the bottom of your car yes you don't puncture the battery and all that because that happens sometimes <laughs> you know, yeah they, it happens with my roadster one time they don't know how to lift the they did, car. didn't know the lift points and they they hit they lifted up the roadster and then they punctuated the Ooh, underbody yes it's in there pay for that right and then they know they didn't know who it was and they said oh the guy is not working here anymore it wasn't us so i couldn't prove anything oh see so like if i go to a discount or any place like that I'll just say, let me put these pucks on first before you lift it up, and then they can see exactly where they put the, the jacks. Yeah. yeah. So it makes it nice and easy. Good. And you leave it without the covers, right? Because they are looking nice also yeah. without yep. the covers. Right? I like the 10 spoke wheel, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and you said also that um, you will not uh, want to powder coat the calibers because you want to leave them. Yeah, I like, like, like Or maybe in silver. Maybe, maybe in, in silver, silver, yeah. 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 I kind of like a monochromatic car, black and silver, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So we got all the window tinting done. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's bulldog. really black. Yeah, that's 20% all over. And yeah, 70% in the windshield. I think you did it here in the rear window. The whole rear window, yeah. The whole rear window. And from here you left that open so that you can, right? Because that's dark enough yep. already. And uh, did you put something on here as well, on the on the side windows or not? Oh uh, no, just regular 20% uh, tint on the side windows, 70% yeah. on the front windshield, which makes uh, a really big difference in the sun. Oh uh, yeah. You can't even tell it's there by looking at it. So I tell it yeah, it's there. not there. It, yeah. You cannot tell it. But it stays really cool. It stays inside cool and saves energy. Oh yeah, yep. Especially here in Arizona. And yep, the upholstery is still good, really good. Yeah, the seats are holding up really nice. They're really comfortable seats. Yeah. And for the, uh, here you put some extra uh, uh, foot, foot mats, yep, mats in. Yep, Max Spider 3D floor mats. They make them for the S and the X, and they just started making them for the 3 last month is when they came out with them. And they, they're form-fitting, they fit really nice, they got a nice little texture to them. So. And you just put them in and then you're done with it, right? Yeah, and you just hose them off if they get really muddy, or I just wipe them down with a wet towel and it's perfectly clean. Yeah. Easy to vacuum up, you don't have to mess with the car. And that's Boo Kitty, right? Yep, those are our Boo Kitties there. <laughs> Boo Kitty was a three-legged cat we had for many years and she died, so oh, okay. we just keep her namesake going. And then uh, all nice and clean. There's so now you have to tell me how did you get that clean? Oh yeah, so I haven't polished it yet. This is just basically the factory finish. But I cleaned it, washed it, and sealed it. And yeah. I, use, uh, I use this sealer right here. It's the uh, Wolfgang. Good German name, yeah. Wolfgang. So Wolfgang uh, Deep Gloss Paint Sealant. Yep, paint sealant. Yeah. It's really nice because it's really shiny like wax, but it lasts a lot longer, about six months or so. So, so you put it on about every six months or so, and you just yeah. do like a... a California duster every day to keep the dust off of it. Yeah. Um, maybe once a week or so I do this with the uh, gold class quick detailer and some microfiber towels. Keep it nice and slick. 
Yeah. Providing it doesn't rain. Once it rains and you get all those little muddy spots all over, then you just kind of leave it alone until you get a chance to wash it. Because if you yeah. might, if you try and wipe it down there or use your California duster, it's just going to scratch it all. So what I have sometimes, they have it rained and it dries out, then you have those rings. The those, rings, yeah, the rings yeah. you take out with either yes. you can take them out with a polish like this. Yeah. This is a nice finishing glaze, which will make it really. Once I polish this with this, all the like if you look real close, you'll see it's kind of smoky or a little gray. Yeah. You know, because it needs to be polished. This will make this thing shine like ten times more than it is right now. It would be amazing. And I'll get some time to do that eventually. Mm -hmm. And if you have even more scratches, you can use a total swirl remover, which removes light scratches and swirls from, you know, rubbing it with towels and stuff. You can get a whole package of that, yeah. Yeah, they have a whole system there. And if you have really stubborn bad scratches, use the Ubercoop compound, which takes deep scratches out. And all these have abrasives in them, and these are all called diminishing abrasive compounds. So that means that as you start using the compound, the abrasiveness diminishes until eventually it's just like no abrasives at all. So you get the yeah. initial impact of cleaning it with the abrasives to remove the swirls, but the more you use it, the more it actually polishes the car. So you can't burn through the paint or ruin your paint or ruin the clear coat, especially if you use a DA. So a DA is going to be like this. This is, this is a Flex 1301 fourth action DA. Yeah. So you can see it like manually oscillates and turns. Oh. So it doesn't just spin. So if you leave it sitting on one spot, it won't burn through. It's just like you're doing this with your hand real fast. Yeah. So it makes it really safe to use, and it makes it really easy to apply the polishes and the compounds and even uh, the sealers. You put the sealer on with this too. And that actually works the little water spots and stuff out that you were talking about after you wash your car. Any little very, very small fine scratches, it'll work out with a black pad or if you use a white pad you can apply it that way. And you let it sit for an hour and then you wipe it all off and you get a nice clean shine. And I cleaned this probably a couple months ago and I just do my California duster every day. Yeah. And then I use, like I said, the quick detailer every so often. I did that uh, yesterday. So now, when I'm driving with the car, especially with the Model 3, I get, because of that pretty flat surface here, I get a lot of bugs. Bugs, that. that's a nice bug collector. Yes. So I have this wrap, Expel wrap, the front bumpers wrap, and the hood yeah. wrap for chips and rocks and stuff. Yeah. But you still come home with a lot of bugs, and they, they're hard to get off. You get special bug remover, and you gotta yeah, and scrub, then you it, to scrub it. it and scrub it. So what I do is I take saran wrap, regular saran wrap, and just put a piece from so here. So like food wrap, right? Yeah, food right? wrap. You put a piece right here, all the way across to right here. And it just sticks to it. As long as it's clean, it'll stick to it just like it does stick to itself. Yeah. And you drive up and back. We went up and back to, to uh, Prescott. Came back and there's bugs all over it. And I just peel it off. No more done. bugs. No, no more bugs. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> Most cool. of the bugs collect right here and a little bit on the headlights there. Okay. So what's in your front? My front. Everybody wants to know what's in the front. <laughs> Model 3 has a front. We all like to see what's in there. Let me get over into my app here. All right. We're going to see the front. So this just has my emergency stuff. So if you lift this up, you probably know. The battery's in here. Yeah. And that's where I connected up. I'll have to show you a 12-volt uh, supply for plugging my cooler into and also yeah. my dash cam. And okay, it is right it was a 30 amp fuse or how much how, how big of a fuse uh, you put it? I think in? I use a 12 amp or 14 amp. 14 amp fuse. Yeah, not very big. Yeah. Because I mean it doesn't use much, and I don't want to blow anything up. Yeah. But the fuse is right there. So mm -hmm. this is like a little uh, in case I get stuck at night. This is a little 12 volt Cobb LED light, which is pretty bright. It lights up everything and it sends an SOS if you're in trouble. You can see it's all charged. It charges up with a USB port. And then right. in here I have a 50-foot a heavy-duty 110 or 120 volt cable yeah. for yeah, my good. plug it in. I also have a 25-foot... Um, so where did you buy that one from? Uh, EV, EV store. It's kind of a... EV adapters or something like that. Yeah, or, or EV adapters? Ah, yeah, okay. that, that place, yeah. You might get it also from uh, what is called uh, Good, uh, Good John, Good Johnny or something in the RV stores. Oh yeah, you yeah, could. Yeah. I have a ten. I have the TT30 RV adapter. That's a 1030, uh, yeah. 25 foot cord to go with the 1030 adapter. When I was in Virginia, I wanted to plug into my mom's dryer port. Keep, it, exactly. And it just didn't reach because it's like inside the house, and yeah. it didn't quite reach by like five feet. So I ordered that, and uh, that worked out great. So I have all my adapters in the little, little thing down there. 
1450 and everything, and then I have a first aid kit, a little 12 volt battery for jumping the car if you need to turn it on if your battery's dead. Yeah. And then uh, just some tools. Yeah, some people would not Jumper think cable. that is important, but if the 12 volt battery is dead, the yeah, car, is, car is dead. Yeah, so this is these little things here. You see, we got this at Costco. Yeah. It's a little 12 volt battery, and it comes with like the jumper cables and everything that you can jump a regular car with. And it works great for this because you don't have a lot of amperage to draw when you start the car. It just basically turns relays and stuff on. Yes, exactly. But if the battery goes dead, then your car won't turn on, it won't start, you can't get the front open or anything like that. Yeah. So the trick with these is, change from the Model S and the X, is to get in the front when you have a dead battery, you take this little cover plate off. I think you did a video on this too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Instead of pulling a cable, you get two wires that come out and you attach uh, yes. 12 volts to it and it pops the, and it pops the front but the key to that is it's not like a relay it's a solid state relay type thing to where if your battery has 12 volts and you apply 12 volts to those wires yes nothing will happen so somebody can't come along and just open your front for no reason you have to try and get stuff they can't do that only if your battery is dead and you apply 12 volts then it will pop the front Ah, clever, but, clever mate. So yeah, so Tesla was pretty clever with that. So yeah. with the cable there, like on the SNX, if people know about that, they can just come up and pop that and pull your trunk and take whatever you got at any time. Yeah. So unless your battery's dead, this won't work. The other neat thing we found out is you can actually pop the front with a 9-volt battery. It doesn't have to be 12 volts because of the little pop. That's uh, so the these little ones, these yeah, the, uh, square the little, ones. The little right? pop solenoid in here doesn't need to hold 12 volts. It'll pop at 9 volts. Yeah. So if you ever have a dead battery anywhere, you go into any store and get a 9 volt battery, and then you can pop your front. Connect those two together. Yep. And, connect, it'll, it'll, and then the front opens. And then once you got your front, front you got your 12 volt. Your, then you get to, from the 12 volt, that. you connect to the 12 volt battery. And now you're off and running. Yep. And now, now you're running. Because yeah. I was always thinking as a backup plan, if you have your key in your wallet, you can get into the car with a mechanical key, but here there's no mechanical key. Yes. So how are we going to do that? So it's a multi-step process. Yeah. You know, but you can do that if you just think it through. So that's pretty neat. That's why we have that in there. And also, I found out that if you adjust these little rubber nubs here, you can adjust the preload on the front because Tesla has it adjusted pretty tight. We have to push down fairly hard on the front to get yeah. it to close. Yeah. So you have to use two hands and a lot of surface area to keep from bending your front. But if you adjust this a little bit, you can reduce that. So I've adjusted it to where I can just close it. And then you see where that uh, right closing here, yeah. is. You press on the Tesla T. Just like that. With one thumb, you press it down. Polish off your T. You don't have to put your hand, because they tell you to push it like that. Yeah, and then, and then you have your hand, <laughs> fingerprints on your, on your hood. Your hood all finger chunked with paint. Yep. So now it's nice and easy, and I've driven this thing for several thousand miles. It's all still aligned, so yeah, you just yeah. got to tweak it a little bit. So coming along here, I'll show you what the, where that plug is. You got oh, a 12 volt, plastic. right? Yep. Yeah. So when I went to Virginia, I had a 12 volt cooler. It's a little thermoelectric cooler that plugs in. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to make sure it would stay on when I was charging or when I was out of the car or whatever. So you have to get down there and see it. But down here. A little 12 volt plug I put right there. Uh, that's here in the corner. Yep, and that's always always on 12 volts. So you can use that to charge your phone if your car's off, or I use it to keep my cooler on, or whatever you want to plug into it. And it's, uh, it's on a 7 amp fuse. Cool. And there's a better shot, oops, of the uh, 3D car mats. Ah, uh, you did that cover on top of here? Yeah, that's a little non-skid thing because right now we put our phones there to charge. Ah, okay. I ordered the uh, Nomad wireless wireless charger, charger that right. goes inside there. Yes. And we pre-ordered it, so they're going to ship those out on the tenth. Oh, good. But good. I also like that little non-skid thing because I use that to you know put my phone on to put things on when I'm driving around. Yeah. And keep them from Actually, around. I I clear brought well the Bulldog Detail clear brought this this and these pieces. Yeah. So that you don't have uh, scratches coming on. That. This gives you a little bit of tact, though. So you can put something on it and it doesn't. It doesn't slide, off. slide out, yeah. Yeah, the clear, the clear ball is still pretty smooth. Yeah. And then if you look up here, I got the little uh, Tesla screen. Ah, yes. Nicely there. That's the Tesla screen for uh, for to, uh, to lesser sun intrusion. Yep. And it it's kind of really a tail tail mesh kind of. Uh, yep. It, you know that they had it one time for the Roadster. Really they? Originally, Taylor Mash they called it. And instead of having the uh, Roadster cover that you had could, could have the Taylor Mash on that instead. Oh, yeah. Instead of having the top ones, you get a little bit of yeah. air going in there? Yeah. That's cool. And then the uh, 
see the same match in the back. So the backs look pretty cool. It forms yeah. fits in there. Yeah, it's from here. Yeah, it fits very nice in. Yeah, really what is that company cool. called? Uh, Max Spider 3D. Max Spider. We got 3D. these on. I think we got them on Amazon. You can get them on Amazon. And that's the space for the uh, kitty cat. Yep. <laughs> yep. And these are uh, these are special uh, jacks for the Model Three. Ah uh, yes. And these are made by Jackpoint Jacks. A guy named John. He makes these. Here in town. Oh uh, no, I don't know where he is, Texas maybe, but these are uh, cast aluminum, so they're not that heavy, but they're very sturdy. Okay, I can lift them up, yeah. Uh, again, just because I have my my stained floor, I put these rubber pucks on the bottom here. By these are puck, pucks again, ice hockey, hockey pucks, pucks, pucks yeah. same hockey pucks. Yeah, right? they're cheap and they work great, and now you can slide these around, they don't hurt your floor. Yeah. But you put this on your jack, and, and that, you jack it right up and you can see the and outline. it fits exactly, right? Exactly on the jacking point of the Model 3 or the S or the X. It works on all three. Yeah. And you jack it up high enough to where you can get this underneath it. And then you slide this bottom piece in it, let it back down, and it locks together and makes a really nice stand. And Tesla actually uses those. They, they, help, they design these with John for use on the field for the mobile service guys. So I can put the whole car on the stands. Yep. And then just take the all wheels off. This car is so stiff, if you lift up one corner, the other side goes up too. Oh, it wow. It doesn't, doesn't twist, yeah. Wow. So it's a, And you can tell when you drive it, very stiff, you know, nice, nice, good performance ride. Yeah. Because we were taking it, we were taking it through some pretty good turns on the back roads of Virginia, and there's not much body roll at all. I mean, it's very, Oh, yeah, there are some curvy, very, nice curvy roads. Very, very solid. You take this thing at high speed, you know, and it's very, very nice. Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> right, <or what? laughs> We went to the top of... Uh, um, where did we go to? Uh, um, Mount. Uh, well, I'll have to look that up. I forgot already where okay, it was. Okay, well, uh, I will. In, it's in the Rocky Mountains. Mount okay. Evans. Mount Evans, yeah. Mount Evans, we were okay. We the top of Mount Evans, which is 14,200 something feet. Um, myself and Brian. We both, With this car? Yeah, we both drove up there. All and right. the last probably four or five miles, it's just like a one and a half lane asphalt road, no side rails, nothing. And it's like you're just kind of freaking out when you're driving up there. But. Uh, we pretty much left a little bit of space in front of us so yeah. we could take off, and we got up to about 55 on those little, those little <laughs> mountain roads. And we saw some uh, mountain goats up there. So it, this a big portion of your house becomes uh, a garage. Well, the house <laughs> is over there. This is this all was RV parking when I bought the house. Oh, that was RV parking. Dirt lot, yeah. Dirt yeah, lot. just you just put the roof on top of it, yeah. Or? No, this, there's nothing here. Just dirt, just just dirt, nothing. Yeah, but you have a nice floor. I put a, laid a slab down, stained it, built all this myself. It took a year and a half. There's a second story up there, all 10-foot ceilings, 7-foot doors. I have tons of outlets all the way around it. I upgraded my panel to 200 amps. Oh, good. No, actually, it's 400 amps. 400 amps? 200 for the house, 200 for the shop, which gave me less of headroom for all the chargers. Yes. Originally, the house had a 120 amp, 125 amp panel. Uh, that doesn't get you. That, that, that doesn't, doesn't get you far. For uh, my, my compressor and welders and stuff, I didn't know I was going to have electric cars. This was back in 2007. So yeah, but your welding is also too. Uh, too yeah, exactly. Right? So I wanted lots of headroom for upstairs stuff, air conditioners, and welders, compressors. Yeah. We started getting electric cars. I'm like, hey, I got plenty of room to put more chargers in. Each one gets its own circuit. I can charge all the cars at once. Oh. And great, so great, great for tall people too. Just in case anybody. Do you, do you think the the wheel caps you will paint them black or not? you think about that or not? Or you want to powder coat the, the wheels in black or not? Yeah, I kind of like the gray. I, might, I, I would probably want to go with silver wheels. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, like it's some of the silver turbines that uh, T-Sport uh, uh, T Line has. Yeah. They get those silver ones, which are pretty cool. Okay, I give you a tip. I turn the camera off then, and I give you a tip where you can uh, powder coat the wheels. But I like, I like the 18-inch size wheels. Yeah, and me too. They're comfortable, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay, one more special thing. So in case you're wondering if you have to supercharge with the bike rack and everything, you can't really back it up to the superchargers because the bikes are too wide. This particular bike rack mounts with these little clamps, which is really easy to take off the bikes. So the bikes come off really easily like this. And what's neat about this bike rack is that it folds up. One and two. And now you can back right into the supercharger and charge up. All right. That's what we're going to do. That was an extra. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do another swing around the car, and 
It's gonna be in the video. What what VIN number is it? Twelve four fifty. Oh, that is pretty early. Well, it took us so we we rented your Model Three. I think that was in early February. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then two weeks later, we got our invite. When they, as soon as they opened them up to everybody, we were the first batch to get our invite. So we ordered our car that same day. And then right about then is when they they uh, did some adjustments on the assembly line or something. And there was a backlog of like a month and a half, and we got stuck in that. So it took us almost two months before we got delivery. That's okay. okay. Out that was the longest two months. The, the other two and a half years we waited was like nothing. <laughs> the last two months was the worst. Okay, guys. Thanks hey, for coming Mike, by. Thank you. Yay! You're enjoying the car. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah, such a fun car. That's yes. good. It's, it's hey, awesome. great. So, great. I pressed and say.